to this week in Nickelodeon history. My name is Captain Eric, and it's a pleasure to welcome you aboard as we celebrate some Nickelodeon anniversaries that have taken place in between the times of January 22nd to January 28th. And let's dive right on into this week's anniversaries. 26 years ago, on March 2nd, 1996, we had the premiere of Space Cases. Created by Peter David and Bill Moomy, the sci-fi comedy ran for two seasons, of 27 episodes. This was running at a time when I was watching Nickelodeon probably at the most in my life, and I have almost no recollection of Space Cases. I went back and, and watched some footage from the show since, you know, I started doing the This Week in Nickelodeon History, going back and going, wait, Space Cases, that was a show. Since then, I have remembered maybe watching an episode here or there, but it aired on Nickelodeon Saturday block SNCC, Saturday Night Nick, which wasn't always a given for me to watch. Depending on what I was doing with my family on Saturday nights, sometimes I wasn't able to watch SNCC, and probably during the time Space Cases was on television, most likely I was busy those Saturday nights. So I just must have missed most of the show, but I do appreciate what I've seen since then. If you're a fan of Space Cases, do you have any solid memories of the show? Definitely let me know in the comments below. 23 years ago, on January 22nd, 2000, the new millennium, we had the premiere of Double Dare 2000. This was a complete revival of the Double Dare concept with a new host at the forefront. Jason Harris takes over the duties of Mark Summers, but it is still Double Dare as you know it with an entirely new twist, though. The 2000 moniker brought alongside an entirely new twist to every bit of Double Dare. There were extra challenges that you could go for in a moment's notice that would increase the reward, but also increase the challenge. So if you were going to a physical challenge and you decided you wanted to go for this extra bit, they would have this little platform come out with a light. Uh, they would make this big deal that if you accepted this extra challenge, you would get X amount of points extra on top of what you would normally get. But the extra challenge could add an entire new element to the physical challenge. It could make you blindfolded. It could have you do the entire physical challenge backwards or with your hands tied behind your back. It would just add something that you couldn't know of beforehand. You had to accept the challenge, and then you were told afterwards what it was going to be. On top of that, I believe there was some extra add-on to the slopstacle course at the end that I'm not entirely remembering but you know what even without Mark Summers who I adore I enjoyed Jason Harris at the forefront of Double Dare 2000 if you were a fan of Double Dare then you didn't really have that hard of a time getting into the Double Dare 2000 concept even without Mark Summers there and even if it was noticeable for you as a fan there was there was still so much Double Dare to be found it was impossible not to be a fan it must have been a messy week for Nickelodeon in the year 2000 because in the same week that they premiered Double Dare 2000, we had the premiere of another messy game show. On January 24th, 2000, 23 years ago, we had the premiere of Slime Time Live. The show created by Niels Shermans and Richard Berry ran for eight seasons, although this isn't a normal Nickelodeon game show. It didn't have a normal half-hour time slot. It would air in between Nicktoons during the commercial breaks and would feature interactive games where viewers at home could call in and play up against kids in the audience where it was taped at Universal Studios in front of the Nickelodeon Studios. So if you were lucky enough to be in the theme park during the taping, you could find yourself on television. During rare occasions, of course, if the weather didn't permit for the taping to be outside, they would tape the show inside of the studios. I went back and watched 
the taping right before the premieres of The Fairly Odd Parents and Invader Zim, since I most certainly would have seen that footage as I was watching the night those shows premiered. Instant nostalgia. The show was presented by Dave Azer, Jonah Travick, and Jessica Holmes. All three of them had such great chemistry and put on an enjoyable show. I can't thank them enough for their time on Slime Time Live. There were a number of celebrities that appeared on Slime Time Live over the course of its run, and when you look up any list of these celebrities, most of them don't feature any sort of sourcing whatsoever. There are some episodes of the show that you can find on YouTube that people have luckily recorded over time, but there isn't any sort of concrete way to look up some of these names. Most of these names are musical artists of the times, so they seem reasonable even without sourcing. Musical acts like Aaron Carter, The A-Teens, Lil Romeo, Lil Bow Wow, 3LW, Chris Kirkpatrick, Dream Street, you remember Dream Street? Those seem reasonable without any sort of sourcing, although Dream Street is one of the few here that does feature its source to prove that they appeared on the show. Some of these other names, though, celebrities of the time, you have Nick Cannon, that seems reasonable, Dana Carvey, David Arquette, Randy Savage, Wee Man from Jackass, I guess Jackass was on at the time, so that might have been a nice little crossover there, I suppose. But then you get into some of the names here that make no sense as far as appearing on Slime Time Live, and I have done a bit of research and couldn't find any sort of proof but apparently, Gary Delabate, Baba Booey, appeared on Slime Time Live. Gary, of course, from the Howard Stern Show, Baba of all places, at some point appeared, according to Wikipedia. And I'm not even going to believe that. But the one name on here that shocked me when I kept seeing his name pop up on every single list, no matter what Nickelodeon-related wiki I was on, this one name was on there, that of filmmaker David Lynch. That's right, David Lynch apparently appeared on Slime Time Live. And that's how David Lynch would speak as his character Gordon Cole in the show Twin Peaks, a show he helped create. And if you know anything about David Lynch, Nickelodeon is the last place you would imagine David Lynch popping up. But even on these Nickelodeon not Nickelodeon run, but Nickelodeon fan run Wikipedias, David Lynch's name shows up consistently on all of the lists of names of celebrities who have appeared on Slime Time Live. So it was the one shocking bit of some of this deep dive, and I couldn't even find any of the footage, apparently, of David Lynch appearing even as a voiceover. And that's how I imagine he appeared on the show, just his voice. They would have celebrities call in, so it wouldn't be unheard of I guess if David Lynch called into Slime Time Live and had that unique voice of his that he could project, but in person, if there's footage of this that exists, please let me know in the comments below. I would be more than welcome to accept more David Lynch in my life. And since I brought up David Lynch on this episode, I want to bring up my friend Brian's project, Twin Peaks Unwrapped. If you're a Twin Peaks fan, check out the podcast and the book in the podcast description below. 16 years ago, on January 27th, 2007, the Naked Brothers Band, the movie, premiered on Nickelodeon. The movie originally premiered in 2005, I believe, through some film festivals, but the entire series of the Naked Brothers Band was created by Polly Draper and was a mockumentary-style look into the lives of her actual children, Alex and Nat Wolf, and their band, the Naked Brothers Band, which they actually were a band together. They created music. They were legitimately talented kids. But unfortunately, due to the name, I didn't become a fan. I couldn't get into something called the Naked Brothers Band. I know that there was meaning behind that name and the entire project was a family affair. That is something I can't take away from them. It's something I look at and I would love to have a mockumentary style TV series with my entire family working on it. That seems like it would be a fun time. And Alex and Nat Wolf have both gone on to incredible careers in their own right, so I'm sure that they hold the Naked Brothers Band dear in their heart, but I, 
I couldn't be a fan of it. I may have not been the biggest fan, but the Naked Brothers Band certainly had their success on Nickelodeon. And if you were a fan of them, let me know in the comments below. 14 years ago, on January 24th, 2009, the final episode of Tack and the Power of Juju premiered on Nickelodeon. Created by John Blackburn, the show ran for two seasons of 57 episodes. Tack was created by Avalanche Software CEO John Blackburn, who first came up with the idea of the character in 1995 before pitching it proper to the studio in 1998. Now, in between that point in time and its release, someone within THQ and the development process decided to put together the worlds of Tack and the Power of Juju and Nickelodeon because it is a match made in heaven. When I saw any of the footage of this game when it was being promoted at the time of its release, even though it wasn't based on any sort of pre-existing Nickelodeon property, it seemed like a Nickelodeon property in its own right. There was something about the world, the character, it was Nickelodeon, and four years after the original game released, eventually we would get that TV series, which of course is the overall anniversary we are celebrating today, which ended its run. It was the first CGI series that Nickelodeon made in-house. Of course, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius was made with O Entertainment and DNA Productions. This one was made completely under the Nickelodeon Animation Studio. 12 years ago, on January 28, 2011, SpongeBob SquarePants Legends of Bikini Bottom premiered on Nickelodeon. Of course, SpongeBob SquarePants was created by Steven Hillenburg. Legends of Bikini Bottom was an anthology series of six episodes, not really having to do with one another, but all of them having to do with various creepy ghouls that you can find within Bikini Bottom. The episodes, The Monster Who Came to Bikini Bottom, Welcome to the Bikini Bottom Triangle, The Curse of the Hex, The Main Drain, Trench Billies, and Sponge Kano all premiered on January 28th, 2011. Three years ago, on January 24th, 2020, the American version of The Crystal Maze premiered on Nickelodeon. Created by Jacques Antoine and presented by Adam Conover, the show ran for one season of 20 episodes. Oh, you're still here! Well, even though the anniversaries are over, it is now time for Captain Eric's Top 5 of the week. And since I'm shooting video for this week in Nickelodeon history now, and since one of our anniversaries was video game related, I found myself reorganizing my Nickelodeon video game shelf over there the other day and thought, why not have a top five Nickelodeon video game related category? Something, something special where I can actually have the visual aspects that I'm talking about instead of looking at a screen. So this is not my top five favorite Nickelodeon video games of all time. That is not a list I'm ready to make right now. But these are the top five games that if I had to start playing, someone came in with some sort of weapon and said, you have to start playing these games now. These are the five that I would just quickly choose and start playing. So not in order of preference, in order of release, here's my top five Nickelodeon video games that I would want to start playing right now. Number five is the Ren and Stimpy show, Stimpy's invention for the Sega Genesis. This is easily my first Nickelodeon video game. This is probably the first one I ever received in my life from my parents, and it's one of my favorites. It's something that I know inside and out. This game is such a blast to play. It's enjoyable from beginning to end. It is certainly difficult at times, but if you're a Ren and Stimpy fan, there is so much to be found. Let's get some of that Sega Genesis ASMR go look at that we got the cartridge we got the game manual which you don't see these in a lot of video games these days but yeah we got the entire manual here it tells you a little bit more about the game all of the movements this would be the thing that once you were in the car from the game store and your your parents bought you a game you would open it up and you would get to look through this thing while you were on your way home to get you ready to play the game it was the equivalent of watching a review or watching preview videos on YouTube on your way home, but this is something you can hold. This is something you can keep. And look, it's promoting Toe Jam and Earl on the back. A little twofer there. So the Ren and Stimpy show, Stimpy's Invention, an easy choice. Number four is a game I can easily jump into at any time, SpongeBob SquarePants Monopoly. That's right. 
Monopoly. I'm a fan of Monopoly. Most people do not like Monopoly, and I find that most people have been playing Monopoly wrong for their entire lives. If you play by the correct rules that come with the game, it's not actually that bad. But when you start getting into those house rules like putting money every time you pay taxes or pay any sort of fees, you throw that in the middle and then whoever lands on free parking gets all that money. No, that's not supposed to happen. That makes the game go longer. That is why the game is taking you forever to finish because you're keeping money in the game. You want to keep money out of the game. Get it from players into either your pocket or the bank. You don't want to throw it in the middle. You don't want to give more people chances to stay in the game if they're about to be bankrupt. You want to bankrupt people. Already loving Monopoly and then having all of the SpongeBob aesthetics added on top of it is like having a cake that you already enjoy without any frosting and then taking the greatest frosting ever, adding it on top of it. And even though that one piece of cake is just rich enough, you don't need a second piece, you want to keep a second piece around. You want to always have a piece of that cake around. And this is certainly cake I'm willing to dive into at any point in time. I've been waiting for a time to start live streaming SpongeBob Monopoly. I might wait for a certain period of the year, maybe a themed month of just Monopoly madness, but I enjoy this game a lot. I hope if you ever find yourself in a time where you can play SpongeBob Monopoly on the PC, you give it a try. Even if you've never enjoyed a physical game of Monopoly, a virtual game of Monopoly will have you play by the correct rules. Therefore, you'll get an entirely new experience of how to play Monopoly. So try this out. Let me know what you think. Number three is Nicktoons Unite on the Nintendo DS. I haven't played this version of Nicktoons Unite since it released. And I got to say, I enjoyed the Nintendo DS version a lot. I would play it during the downtimes at school, during lunch periods if I was able to. It was a fun experience from what I remember, and I haven't really played it since then. So I enjoy the original Nicktoons Unite, but I chose the DS Nicktoons Unite because I haven't played it in a while. I might enjoy it again. What is the experience like on the second playthrough? Number two, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Not specifically for the PC, but this is what I saw and this is what I went for. But if you have ever played Battle for Bikini Bottom, either the original or the rehydrated version, then you know the kind of time you're in for. Being a fan of the rehydrated version, I am thoroughly excited to see how the Cosmic Shake plays out. Maybe that ends up on this kind of top five here is one of my favorites to go for. Number one is Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. The Nickelodeon Fighter, released not too long ago, features so much Nickelodeon love, it's oozing of it from front to back, and even from its initial launch, has added more on top of it, including more characters and voice acting for all of those characters, so now it's not just a hollow mess of punches and kicks and messiness of slime, they're now voices that you can hear of all of these classic actors, most of them coming back, to reprise their classic roles. If you're a Nickelodeon fan, this is a game to check out. Even if you're not the biggest fan of platform fighters, the, the love that was poured into this is so evident. If you're a fan of Nickelodeon, I think you'll become a fan of All-Star Brawl. Even if you're not the biggest fan of Nickelodeon, but you are a fan of platform fighters, I think there's enough depth here that you'll find an enjoyable experience. And that is going to be it for this week in Nickelodeon history. Thank you for joining me. I truly appreciate your time. If you tune into this show week in and week out, I truly appreciate you being a part of the Ready Crew. If you would like to write into the show, you can do so at nickelodeonhistory at gmail.com. You can also follow the captain on social media at I'm Ready Podcast on Twitter and at SpongeBob Podcast on Instagram. If you would like to support Captain Eric, there are two ways you can do so. First of which is by subscribing to the Captain Eric YouTube channel. You can click on the link in the podcast description below or go to youtube.com slash at the Captain Eric. Click on the subscribe button and that shows your appreciation. I love seeing the ready crew grow. The other way you can support Captain Eric is by clicking on the red bubble link in the podcast description. There, you'll find some Captain Eric pieces of art and logos that you can put on a multitude of different products, including stickers, t-shirts, or even pillows. 
anything that comes in from my projects go directly back into my projects, and it's always appreciated. As always, guys, I love all of you. Thank you for being here. If you're watching at this point, you should just stick around. There's more of this kind of content to come. So here's to another week of Nickelodeon history, and this is Captain Eric signing off. Stay safe out there, everyone. Be kind to one another, and come aboard again to another episode of This Week in Nickelodeon History. I'm here with my friends. <laughs>